Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be solving a single problem in four programming languages, Python, C++, and two array languages, BQN and APL. And I think it is extremely interesting to compare and contrast these two different solutions in non-array languages versus array languages because the two ways that you solve these are quite different. So the problem that we're going to solve is entitled final array state after k multiplication operations. The problem reads, you are given an integer array nums and two integers, k and multiplier. You need to perform k operations on nums. In each operation, you do the following two things. Find the minimum value x and nums. If there are multiple minimums, choose the first one and then replace that selected minimum x with x multiplied by the multiplier. And then it says you want to perform this operation k times, and then once you've done that, return the final state of your nums array. So pretty straightforward, but what's interesting about this is having to repeat k operations, which is kind of a for loopy thing, but you're not doing it over a list. So you're not going to be able to map this operation. So to solve this in BQN and APL is pretty interesting. But first, let's look at the first Python solution. So in this solution, we have a nested for loop. The first for loop is just looping through our k iterations where we're going to perform k operations. And in the inner for loop, we are basically just going through finding the minimum manually. And then each time we find the minimum, we reset our index i to be the current index j. And then we reset, reset our minimum low to be the current value e. And once we've done that in our inner loop, we multiply the value at the index i to be uh, multiplied by m. And then once we've done this k times, we just return our list nums. Pretty straightforward, a little bit ugly in my opinion. We can make this look nicer at the cost of some efficiency by doing the following. We replace our inner explicit loop with an implicit loop, making two calls to the dot index method on our list nums and the min function. So min is going to get us our minimum value. And then we can use that paired with the dot index method to figure out the index of the first occurrence of that minimum value. So once we have that index i, we can do the same thing, then return nums. This is a little bit less efficient, technically the same time complexity, big O of k times m, but the coefficient is going to be a little bit worse because we are technically doing two iterations over our list in the implicit inner loop because dot min or min and dot index are both going to require uh, looping over your list nums. So this is the two Python solutions. Let's move over to our C++ solution, which is the following. We have a while loop that is decrementing k for our k iterations. And then inside each of the iterations of our while loop, we are making a call to the C++20 ranges overload of min element, which is going to return us an iterator. We can then dereference the iterator and multiply it by m, return nums at the end, and we are good to go. So you can actually make this two lines shorter by combining the dereference of the iterator and the multiplication to one line and getting rid of the braces. I actually like this quite a bit more. It is a pretty nice solution to a trivial problem. So I do think C++ looks slightly nicer than the Python equivalent because this actually doesn't have the overhead of looping twice because min element returns us the iterator, we can dereference this. We don't need to make use of an index method or anything like that. That is our first two languages, Python and C++. Now let's go over to BQNPad and solve this live there. So here we are in BQNPad. We have our two test cases. Our first list is 2, 1, 3, 5, 6. We're going to do five iterations, and our multiplier is going to be 2. And note that we are making use of a header here in our function get final state where we are destructuring this list into the nums, the k iterations, and m as the multiplier. And currently, we are just returning nums. The first thing we want to do, though, is we want to find the minimum value, which in both of the test cases is going to be 1. We then want to find the index of this value, which we can do by the following. We can use equal and the back hook, aka monadic before. And this is going to find us where in the original list does the minimum occur. So in this case, there's only one minimum. We could have multiple minimums. And so in order to isolate the first minimum, we can pair this with another primitive, which is going to be unique mask. So first, we will just pair it with identity. So now you can see on the right here, we have a we have the mask that represents the minimums. And on the left, we have the original list. 
If we replace this with unique mask, this shows us the first occurrence of every unique value. So in both of these cases, every single value only occurs once, so you're just gonna get back a mask of ones. But in a case in the future where you have two values that are the same, uh, we're gonna see something different. So we need to combine these with a uh, and operator. So now this is representing our first minimum. And now we want to turn this mask into a multiplier mask that we can multiply with our current list. So the first thing we want to do is we want to multiply this by M. And this is going to give us the value that we need to duplicate or multiply our minimum value by. And then we also don't want to zero out everything else. So we want to uh, get the maximum with one. So uh, this will ensure that the values that don't need to be multiplied still say the same. So if we do this, we're gonna end up with now, this is a mask that we can multiply our initial list by. And so if we do that, we can do this by doing a multiplication and monadic before or after because multiplication is commutative. And this is basically the next iteration uh, down below. You can see that we've multiplied the one in the first list by two and the one in the second list by four. And now we need to do this k times. And this is where uh, these two solutions really differ. There's no while loop that we need to reach for. We actually have a primitive called repeat. And for the sake of the viewer, if you are ever looking for a glyph that you don't know how to type, I do know how to type this one, but you can just hit the tab key and then you can go repeat. And you can see this is backslash hash pound octothorpe pick your poison. Here we can just hit enter to complete. And now if we combine this with k, we get our correct answers. Now this has been applied k different times, and this is extremely beautiful. And now what I wanna do is we're not gonna hop over to try APL because I just want to build this up the way that you would solve this in dialog APL. So let's put a little comment at the end here that says this is dialog APL. So we don't have the monadic backhook or the monadic before. So the way that we would end up doing this is we have our, our backslash and then to get the monadic backhook, we can just do a fork where the uh, right. So this is a way to spell the sigma combinator using a fork. And then we can do basically the exact same thing a uh, unique mask is the not equal sign in APL. And then we want an M multiply and we want a one maximum. But once again, we don't have the after or the before in APL. So the way that we have to do this is by typing a multiplication and then by typing a right tack. And if we put the parentheses here, you might notice that this is actually quite a bit shorter I know we haven't done the power operator yet, but this is quite a bit shorter. And this is one of the things I wanted to highlight in the array solutions that even though we have access to the before and after, AKA the hook and back hooks, sometimes it's actually better. We can avoid two characters here, these two parentheses, if we just use the S combinator in the form of attack here or a fork with a identity specialization. Anyways, I thought that was interesting to point out. And the last thing we need to do here is we need to add the power operator K. We don't have um, stranding in dialog APL, so we need to add an extra set of parentheses. But this is the comparison of the BQN and dialog APL solutions. Interesting to note that sometimes nicer to spell S or Sigma, AKA, the hook and back hook with a fork and not with the actual primitives. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. And if you've got an alternative solution to this problem in a language of your choice or in one of these languages, feel free to comment in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.